assalamu alaikum everyone i hope you all are doing well this is anam zehra general manager trainings at learning minds and i welcome you all to the second episode of the living well series uh, a well being dialogue series that we have uh, developed and curated for all of you to incorporate the practices of uh, good well being and a good lifestyle so that you can have a better time during these uh, unprecedented times and uh, today in the second episode we will be talking all about physical well being uh, yesterday uh, we had you you salve with us and we were talking more on the social aspect how to you know build relationships with your aura and foster positive relationships with your friends and family and even with your clients and uh, today it's more on your personal health you have how you have to take care of yourself how you have to manage uh, those routines now while work at home so all those nice questions uh, and some difficult questions that are there in your mind uh, we'll be answering that and i would like to welcome uh, my guest for today i'll just take her into the stream we have with us uh, ms bushra mahmood and uh, she is a meditation and wellness expert and today we're going to have some really nice light hearted conversation with bushra regarding uh, wellness practices meditation practices as she has been uh, doing a lot of workshops and has taken some international uh, workshops as well uh, during uh, her career on meditation and wellness and secondly uh, she has created this platform by the name of punyog uh, out of her passion to help individuals in their self development and uh, uh, self development and meditation so i will how are you thank you so much anam i'm good how are you doing perfectly fine perfectly fine so how's everything at your end everything i would actually start off the conversation with you is there a I'm bit good. of a lag in the conversation yes yes there is i'm trying to guess what you're asking all right me. all right yeah all right i'll just wait before i complete my question then okay all right how are you doing i'm good i'm doing great anam thank you for introducing me in such a humble way uh really happy to be here to share my experience and to share my knowledge with you and your audience so really looking forward to our conversation today that's amazing it's an uh, honor for us that you've taken our time and we will be having some great knowledge sharing over here today so first of all what it to mute your body into meditation uh, workshops you have people so what are those conversations that you're hearing specifically regarding their physical wellness regarding their lifestyle what are those changes in the conversations that you've heard so far so i've been to many uh, group sessions where even i have conducted some group therapies and i have attended as an attendee as well previously in my life only to explore this part of my life and you know in the thirst to develop myself for in the love of self so when i used to go there whatever time i have spent with people as my peers or the time that i have spent while uh, trying to be uh, a helping hand to the people who come to me the conversations have really changed so you know these days especially with covid and the pandemic going on um basically what happens is that since we want to keep our focus on the physical uh, health today i just want to say first of all that your mental health and your physical uh stability are highly connected they are very very highly connected if you are mentally stable if you are emotionally stable your physical stability is at a good state you're in a good place then because what happens is when we start piling up stress inside ourselves when we start worrying about the future and we when we do not let go of the past when we stick ourselves into the pain that we have already endured in the past we miss out on the present and when we are missing out on the present our entire attention is either in in the worry for of the future or enduring the pain of the past and what happens is it piles up stress inside us 
Now, this stress is piling up inside of us in our bodies. And then later on, later in life, and with many cases, even immediately, it turns into one or the other form of disease. It could be depression. It turns into anxiety. It turns into sleeping disorders. It may turn into eating disorders. So a lot of people, their bodies, they react in their own different ways. So what I'm trying to uh, say here is the point is that your mental health and your physical stability both are interconnected and they are highly related to each other. Because when we fall physically ill, when our body starts to deteriorate, it is basically a response to the emotional and mental health that we have been carrying along in our bodies. People these days due to pandemic and the COVID situations, I see people are losing their motivation at work. People are feeling lazy because they lack, uh, you know, proper routines. Their routines have changed. And we as humans, we are resistant to change. So in order, in, with that behavior, the first behavior that comes from the brain is resistance to something new, to, to a change, to a change in your routine, to a change uh, regarding something that is smoothly going on. If there's something new, our brain responds immediately. And when it responds, our bodies feel hesitation and discomfort in adapting to a new lifestyle or in adapting to a new circumstance. So people are, you know, really, uh, I've seen a lot of increasing anxiety. I've seen a lot of complaints coming to me regarding sleeping disorders. People are not getting a good night's sleep. Other than that, you know, other economical situations and conditions of people, people are facing job security issues. And, you know, and then that also keeps adding to the fear and to the anxiety that one is facing. And all of these things, when they keep piling up, you've lost your routine, you've lost your sleep, you're eating in a, in a disorderly manner, and you are not motivated at work, you don't get an appropriate environment to sit in and work, so your, wakes, your workspace is not the same anymore. So people are feeling more and more anxious and they're losing on their motivation. And they're not able to really understand how to go about it. So this is one big thing, one basic thing that comes to me these days. People complain about sleeping disorders and lack of motivation. And they're looking for solutions and they seek for advice. And if you talk about what people used to talk about in the group therapies that I used to attend or give, there I used to hear people being stuck, not really stuck, but holding on to their past pains that they have endured when they were a child. People as old as 40 years old, people as old as 50 years old, people as young as 25 or 30 years old. I have been to groups where all age groups, all age brackets, male and female, all of them have been enduring a lot of pain which they are carrying from their childhood. So those used to be the major pain points of people that used to pile up into their bodies and their minds and then their emotional stability was gone and their mental stability is disturbed and eventually their physical health is also has a negative impact on that so yeah more or less you see the the uh, what do you say the result is same the causes might be different but if you see the seed to uh, a weaker physical stability or health or the seed to a weak mental stability or emotional stability is stress. Stress either coming from pandemic, stress either coming from the past or the childhood or maybe from the present or the worry of future. Exactly. Exactly. That's how it is. And uh, that's where uh, we brought in... Uh, there's a lot of anxiety going on uh, in the current, uh, although a lot of people now have been, you know, they're, they're adapting to it, but probably there's some point where they are neglecting or in of physical wellness right now. Uh, yeah. So that's where uh, we wanted you, like we start, start from the scratch that what wellness means, how meditation can help them. So we'll start off from that and then we can come on to 
some great lifestyle uh, operate in their lives and uh, live better, live more well. So we'll start off from wellness, uh, Bushra. What 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 do you mean by wellness? What what does what do you think a layman would understand? So wellness in its simplest form, even if you open up a dictionary or you open up Google, wellness is a state that you are in. And that state is defined as in you're in a good place. Your health, your emotion, your mental stability is in a good state. You are in a happy state of yourself, of being, of your existence. So when you say that, uh, when you talk about wellness, it does not only mean being physically healthy. It also means to be emotionally and mentally as well as physically healthy. So there are three things we are made of, mind, body, and soul. So the mind, which is your mental health, your body, which uh, covers your physical health, and your soul, which covers your heart and the energy that we create, the energies that we exuberate, that we carry, our souls, our spirits, or you may also uh, label is at your emotional health and stability. So when all of these three, three things are aligned, are stable in your life, you are in a well, you are in a state of wellness, you're in a state of being good, of being happy, of being content. So that is what I define wellness in its simplest form. Yes, yeah, so very well put. So it's it's not just your physical health, it's not just your mind as well. It's all the facets of well-being that you have to take care and incorporate in your lives to achieve the level of well-being uh, in your lives. And that's where what we're going to talk about. That, uh, Busha, how do we achieve a, life, so you a better state of well-being in our lives? Yeah. So the simplest way I can explain you as to how we can achieve wellness, of course, I think it's common sense. I said mind, body, and soul. So mind, body, and soul, we need to manage the three of them in order to feel, in order to live in a state of wellness or well-being. The first thing I say is attention, dehan. Attention means giving focus, being aware, of being attentive. Of being attentive and aware of what? Of the internal environment. This covers your heart and your emotions and your soul. And the external environment, which may also include your physical body and your surroundings and the environment you are in. So attention and awareness, focus. This comes from mindfulness and meditation practices. How? Because mindfulness, again, it means to be attentive, to be present in the now, to be focused on what you have in hand right now, to be focused on this particular breath that I'm taking in, rather than worrying about the future or worrying about the past. So attention, which is Dehan, or you can also call it mindfulness, it brings in, it helps you learn how to focus on the now. Now, once you have learned how to focus, you will be aware of what is happening inside you, which also includes your mind and your heart, and what is happening outside you, which includes your environment, which includes your body. Once you are aware of what is happening internally and externally, you have the knowledge of the facts and of the truth of yourself. Okay, this is where I am right now, internally, emotionally, mentally, physically. And what is happening in the environment? What is true as of now? Knowledge agai, knowledge gives you the wisdom. When you get, then you come towards resolving any kind of emotional instability. You come towards resolving any kind of mental instability or any physical instability. So this was part one, attention, which is also in other terms, mindfulness or uh, uh, being aware. The second step is intention. Now that you're aware of your internal environment, of your external environment, then you set an intention, a mantra, that this is what I want to achieve or this is what I want to resolve. This is what needs to be fixed in me. This is what I need to work on. And it could be 
it does not really have to be something really big or really drastic it can be a, a thing as small as i need to start waking up on time and not at 1 pm i need to be a morning person in order to utilize all the hours i have been gifted in a day to pehli cheez aa gayi attention dusri cheez aa gayi intention the third is attitude which is behavior so you became aware you highlighted what you are where you are right now then you set an intention ki this is what i want to work upon right now and then comes your behavior because only making a promise to yourself is not enough then you need to act upon that promise then you need to behave and you need to bring about changes in order to achieve those goals so wellness which includes i'm just trying to summarize which includes your mind body and soul it comes when you are paying attention you try to focus and then you set an intention and then you go about bringing the change with your actions so in its simplest form these are the three things that you need to do and then we can now you know one by one deep dive into how mindfulness can be practiced how meditation helps how we achieve emotional stability and all of those things so mindfulness as i said you know um uh, is all about living in the now for example i'll give you very small practices to eat mindfully there are two three ways to eat food one of them is to look at the food that is being served to you cherish the scent the smell of the food cherish the colors that have been put in front of you when you eat the food eat it slow and try to cherish the flavor try to feel the texture of the food that you're taking in and you will realize that the quality of your entire experience is so much more as compared to the way we generally eat food when we're eating it in a hurry the feeling of contentment the feeling of gratitude after eating food mindfully is way more and way different as compared to how we eat food when we do not pay attention when we are not mindful to what is being given to us given to us similarly eating food sleep mindfully sleep in defined number of hours set a routine for yourself for example if you're a teenager you know so every age groups has a different requirement of sleep hours that are being required and then there's a certain ratio of activity and of rest that is required by the body and this sleep is really a very uh, important part of our lives because it is it's an essential part of our lives it's very important to fulfill the hours of sleep that are recommended to us according to our age and genders why because you see a newborn a newborn has just come out of a mother's womb the first experience of a newborn is to feel homeless you know they're out of the body they've come into an entirely new universe so that child that baby needs a lot of rest and sleep also because physically that body is being developed right now is going under transformation is kind of weak it's fragile so there is less activity and more rest given to a newborn and as the age keeps changing we come over to adolescents they need approximately 8 to 10 hours of sleep their bodies are also going through transformations however their bones and their bodies are stable enough that we need to give them some exercise because now the muscles have started to build and then let's come over to people who are middle aged 25 years and above we can take it up to 64 years of age these people need 7 to 9 hours of sleep there is a lot of mental work, mental work being done at this age however physically the body is also getting older now a lot of years have been spent this body has been used quite much now so the bones and the muscles they may tend to get weak 
So it's important to keep them moving, to keep your machine working, while it is also important to give it rest. So physical activity and movement is really important. Sleep is one of the very vital needs in order to reach the state of well-being or wellness that we're talking about today. It will not only help you emotionally, it will also help you grow physically. Exactly. And I really liked how you walked us through the whole uh, process of it, starting from attention to intention and then mindfully uh, bringing mindfulness in each and every action, starting from your eating habits and your sleeping habits. This can all uh, affect your physical uh, wellness and your lifestyles. All right, mm -hmm. Bushra, next we move up a bit on the work from home scenarios. Uh, people yeah. who are uh, quite stuck now in their homes and they are kind of having a monotonous routines now. What do you see? What, uh, what do you think? And what are the tips that uh, they can follow during uh, this period of time wh while they're working from home? See, first of all, um what people are facing these days with work from home is laziness, change in environment. They, they're not getting the same vibes. There are no colleagues around you. The environment is totally different. You're not at the same place as you used to work before. Communication gap uh, can be seen because you need to communicate through online meetings or softwares, different apps that your organizations have given you or maybe your phone calls and all. So... What I did for myself, it's my personal experience and I also gave these suggestions to the organization where I work at and they did take some of them and people have been, you know, personally coming back to me and telling me that, hey, this really helped and this is this is really good, you know, it uh, keeps us motivated and keeps us get to get going uh, back to work. So the first thing I really did was I created a workstation for myself. Because where you, yeah. So what happens is, you know, when you repeat a similar activity at a certain place in a certain location, that that space starts, you know, giving vibes and energies. That space starts picking that energy. So when we enter an office, have you ever felt the in, when you enter a house, the environment is different, the vibes are different. But when you enter your office or your workspace, the all the energy is different. Your mind gets trained with time because since years and since so many days you've been entering that space and your mind knows that when I see this chair and this table and this particular laptop, it's work time. And your brain is trained that when I see my bedroom, when I see my lounge, when I see the television, uh, when I see my mother's face, this is home, this is relaxation time, this is not work time. So the first thing I did for myself was create an environment. You know, if you do not have a specific table or a workstation or enough space in your room, just move out of the room. Because again, your brain is trained that your bedroom or the room that you're living in is a space for resting, not for work. So pick any corner of the house. Or you may pick any corner of your room if your room has space enough for you. Set up a workstation for yourself. In a week or two, your brain will start behaving in a, in a pattern that you are training it to. When you will see that workstation, you will know it's work time. This is not my relaxing corner. This, I have to work here. And since we also want to keep our focus on physical fitness, I would like to say... Keep a proper chair, work, work chair for you where you have a proper backrest because this I have also heard from a lot of friends. They, 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 they're having severe back issues and back aches because what they do is they slouch, yeah, they slouch in the sofa, in the lounge, sitting with the family and they feel, oh, I'll type my email while the family is around and I'll just sit on the sofa and they're leaning and their back is not properly upright or rested. Or some people start working while they're sitting in their beds you know, half sitting, half lying down, and they just start working. So all of that also impacts your physical health, especially your back and your neck. It may cause neck pain, and it may also cause back pain. So give your, uh, prepare yourself a proper workspace. It could be a corner in the house. It could be a very small space. But your brain will be trained that when I enter here, it's work time. Secondly, not only your workstation, but also define your work hours. 
when we used to go to the office we knew what our work hours are so if i'm getting off at 5 i'm going to leave that space my mind will change the entire environment the entire space the entire energy for my mind is changed after 5 pm when i step out of the office i come back home but now since we're not stepping in and stepping out of different environments we need to define our work times and work hours and intention here plays a huge role you need to keep a strong intention and then you need to act on it accordingly do your work productively try to finish it within the working hours and then you don't have to do any late sittings and i'm sure you know when we complete our work on time if the productivity level is as good as we used to offer it when we were going to the office premises no organization will ask you to uh, stay up all night and just keep working for no good reason so this thing th these are the two things that i did that really helped me a lot you know that that's really important and that's how where our conversation started before entering uh, this live session that probably yeah. creating discipline in your routines is one of the most important thing that will impact your minds and bodies as well yeah. and with that bushra we are getting a lot of questions here uh, on both our youtube and facebook and the first one is from arif karavi and he says kindly suggest some tips to be emotionally stable in this uh, fearful and uh, tense environment Hi Arif thank you for your question so <clears throat> for me emotional stability came to me when i honestly started meditating and when i started my breathing exercises in my life so what happens is it's very interesting i'll tell you breath i believe defines the quality of life it's the basis of our life breath sets the pattern of our emotions when we are angry our breath pattern is different when we are sad our breath patterns are different when we are happy when we are excited our breath changes its patterns so when we start to meditate or when we start to learn how to focus on our breath we are also able to control and to focus on the quality of the experiences and the quality of the emotions that we are experiencing in our life try it for once or twice if you remember me telling you this today if you're getting angry they say drink water get a side don't talk to anyone go take deep breaths go to a corner what do you do in that corner you go and you take breaths right so basically in order to control your emotions in order to control your anxiety or even depression uh breathing exercises really help you they have an impact on the quality of emotions that you're feeling and in order to have a hand on you know how to focus on my breath because it's difficult it's not easy it's not a one day learning to get there it takes a lot of practice it takes a lot of consistency that is why people start meditating that is why people sit in meditations and they start their breathing exercises because in meditation what you're actually doing is you're paying attention to your breath you're making sure that your breath is going deep enough that it fulfills your body inside and when you exhale it empties your body and then your meditation guide or even if you have no guide you're doing it alone you try to let go of all the negative emotions and you try to feel positive inside so breathing and meditation can bring in a lot of emotional stability in you other than that you know if you do not want to meditate or uh, do these breathing exercises even though i feel these are you know uh, very very effective and they have a very quick effect even if you sit in meditation for once for 10 minutes it has a huge impact on your level of stress going down and you know your emotional stability however there are more things that you can do there's so much of therapeutic things you can do you can indulge yourself into art therapy you can indulge indulge yourself into journaling usually what happens is journaling people avoid journaling because it takes a lot of if they feel it's a lot of effort to write on that paper and to make time and all but trust me even if you take out 2 minutes of your day 
or if it is there is any incident that is really disturbed you take a piece of pen and take a piece of piece of paper and a pen sit and write that incident on that paper and believe me you will feel so much better why because you're talking in a sense you're talking to a paper and you have let out all of that anger or anxiety or tension or stress out onto that paper like a friend and a part of it a huge part of it is out of your body now so it's very therapeutic to write because it's very important to let that feelings to let those emotions come out of your body what we do unfortunately is that we keep feeling all of these emotions and we keep piling them in gussa peene ko sikhaya hame gussa pee jao i'm not Super. saying go and take out your anger on a human or someone else but there's no harm taking it out on a paper and writing down that you're feeling really angry and this is what disturbed you and you know what there's one more very interesting thing when you start writing an incident or even if you sit idle you're not writing you're talking in the air you're just imagining that you're just letting it out of your system you realize perspectives of different people आप ये रियलाइज करते हो कि ये मेरा परस्पेक्टिव है लेकिन उस इंसान ने ऐसे रिएक्ट किया उसकी वजह कुछ और हो सकती है बहुत सी चीजों की क्लैरिटी मिल जाती है अ लॉर्ड ऑफ थिंग्स गेट क्लियर आई हैव माय पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंसेस एंड आई हैव मेड माय अ लॉट ऑफ क्लाइंट्स आल्सो प्रैक्टिस दिस इन माय यू नो मेडिटेशन प्रोग्राम्स आई हैव गिवन देम शॉर्ट एक्टिविटीज एंड ऑल एंड दे रियली केम बैक टू मी एंड दे सेड दिस रियली हेल्प्ड इट वाज सो आई फील सो लाइट because a lot of us you know do not give enough importance to communication communication mm-hmm. and then communicating to your own self which is like one of the most difficult task in this whole world yes so they say anger is a negative emotion maybe it is but you can't run away from anger it's a part of your life it's an emotion it exists something will make you angry sometime how you deal with that anger how you practice your breathing how you practice your meditation or how you keep a control over your anger is the is the skill that we all need all right perfect so we talked about breathing exercises and we talked about the journaling habit that can actually uh, serve as a practical tool on uh, bringing emotional stability in us all right the next two questions bushra i would just combine those two questions we had one question from wakas gul and we have another question from shakil ahmed as well and both of them um uh, they are asking that how to incorporate these practices in our daily routines uh the way uh, the stress continues or you know the financial environment goes down uh, also talking about different aspects of well being together how to achieve these all at one time so that's the real issue of people here so you see yeah when we first hear about these things that okay we need to be perfect in all of these three areas in our life so you don't have to be perfect you have to reach a state of contentment a state of stability where you feel that you're in a good place you don't have have to be at the top of the world wellness is being at a good place wellness is being happy being stable and this is achieved with time as i said earlier it cannot happen in one day or one week or one month it takes time you know uh, when you first set uh, when you first start practicing mindfulness or meditation that's the first time you're peeping inside yourself and there will be a lot of emotional ups and downs that you may come through it might be very overwhelming initially because you see if you have not done it before how many years have you neglected your internal self you have to cover up for all those years so it takes time you realize a lot of things you realize a lot of hurt that is residing inside you and then that comes out you realize you become aware of it and then you set an intention okay okay i don't want this particular thing in my life this is what i want to resolve then that takes time and practice then that takes different kind of efforts bringing resilience and then you act upon it which takes more time 
So I'm not saying that we need to reach a state where everything is perfect. But if we start working on it, we eventually reach there. When we have these financial stresses, we all do have. So many companies are not giving pays to their employees. So many people, some are getting fired. Some people are finding smaller jobs than they had before. And so many people are in a compromising state right now. So there is no doubt that there is no stress. There is a stressful environment. Financially, we're all tight. Businesses are not flourishing as they used to. Targets are not being met. And, you know, especially the corporate uh, corporate people, they're all facing a lot of uh, such uh, stress and pressure being faced. But, you know, as I said, breath defines the quality of life. It sets the pattern. We will absorb stress because there is stress. That's another awareness. Stress is. We absorb it. But what we can do is we can process that stress. We can de-stress our minds and bodies. And the de-stress again our meditation and breathing exercises, being mindful. Spend some time alone without technology, without any Wi-Fi connections. Two hours dedicate to In that time, you are alone with yourself. In that time, it's up to you. You want to cherish nature, cherish the nature. You want to focus on the sounds of nature, on the birds chirping outside the window, do that. You want to meditate, you meditate. You want to work out, you work All right, so I think that we have a little bit of uh, power issues uh, at our guest speaker's side. We'll just take on a few of the feedbacks that we've gotten in the comments section and while we wait for Bushra to join in again. So we had uh, had this really nice comment from Shaquille Ahmed. A good definition, uh, no, this one. Eight to 10 hours sleep, really good, but in cities like Karachi, how do we manage it? And I think, uh, Shakil Saab probably is trying to point out towards the power and electricity situation right here going on in Karachi. Just mein, vaki mein, it's very difficult to have a good sleep. And that's where we got a lot of good feedback regarding the eating patterns. Sizra so Suhail says that eating mindfully is a beautiful perspective. Never thought it like this. So yeah, that's how it goes. We'll just take a few more minutes, probably. We'll just connect back with Bushra and uh, try to be live again. So yeah, there we go. We are back again. Sorry. So okay, apologies for the delay that you guys faced for a little while, but uh, Bushra, we managed to take some feedback and some comments that were going in the comment section. And uh, people are really liking about the perspective uh, regarding the sleep and mindful eating that you shared, that they never really thought much about uh, how we can, you know, these are really small things, really, uh, but, but that's what constitutes our lifestyles, right? So next question, Bushra, we have is Muhammad Osama Salim, how to deal with boredom plus this lockdown put many into depression 
due to no work, no outing, no other refreshing activities, how to deal with it? Yeah. So, see, for boredom, you every person is different. You need to uh, find out what is it that you like, and if you don't, if, and if you have not explored it yet, that what is it that interests you or keeps you motivated or is is really a fun activity for you, then that's even better because you have a lot of options to explore. Look for indoor activities. I've seen so many people who have started indoor gardening. So many people who have started to cook. You know, they experiment different things. um look for indoor games and uh, spend some time working out in you know movement of your body you can take some online classes as well i wanted to mention earlier but i think it slipped off my mind regarding work from home that you know if you're sitting idle and this uh, free time is within the time frame of your work hours why don't you go online and start reading some researches or you take some online free courses or you read some case studies that will enhance your skills and they will increase your knowledge but it will be related to work it will keep you motivated as well as far as boredom is concerned there is a lot of activities you can do i believe you can purchase some board games if you want to if you have kids or if you have siblings who can participate with you you can explore some art therapy you can start painting you can start writing you can start reading you can listen to music you can take some online classes i mean really depends on what kind of interests do you have you know if you like singing maybe you can read upon that i i'm not really a pro at that so i don't know but something related to singing you can do online there are so many courses online that are really cheap and they have been they are being offered at discounted rates now because of the entire situation so i believe that uh, i do know that we're all lo locked inside this uh, environment and it becomes difficult to keep ourselves motivated and to keep the energy up but if you keep changing your environment if you do not lock yourself up in your room for the entire day you know spend some time with your family set an hour where you have your dinner or your lunch with your family or set an hour with your children where you have some do some fun activities with the children you know depends on your family dynamics as well and uh, you know what your environment is or what opportunities you have but keep an eye on the opportunities around you keep an eye on the opportunities that you have around you and then you can come up with different things i usually uh, am really into making crafts into paper crafts so what i've been doing lately is i've been making greeting cards for people and i've been expressing how i feel for them for my friends mm -hmm. and for my family if there's an event it was my mother's birthday and then it was my friend's birthday and then there was eid and since we could not meet but i made a handmade greeting card which really expressed how much i feel for them so it was really it, it, there was a lot of warmth in it and they felt really good about it and it made me you know get engaged into some sort of activity for some time so just try to explore and uh, focus yourself or invest your time in finding out what interests you and then maybe you can start doing that perfect perfect bushra wonderfully put and uh, our next question here people are agreeing with your thought that you know it's a conscious effort that you have to make gradually and slowly uh, and with the right pace and practicing these uh, tips we can actually attain a better level of uh, our physical well being in our lives yasir uh, says that thank you busha for an for an insightful session please give your input on how to handle difficult people while keeping yourself emotionally stable <laughs> and mentally stable as well okay so you see when someone is being difficult with us so there's an incident that takes place what happens in that incident somebody did something or said something our brain generates millions and hundreds and hundreds thousands of thoughts we pick one thought out of those thousands of thoughts we pick one of those thoughts and with those th and we react on those thoughts so there are positive thoughts and there are negative thoughts 
हमने उसमें से एक पिक करी एंड वी रिएक्टेड ऑन दैट जब हमने उस एक पार्ट को पकड़ के उसके ऊपर रिएक्ट किया हमारा एक एक्सपीरियंस बना और वहां से हमारे इमोशंस डेवलप हुए Are you getting what I'm trying to say? It's an, it's complete cycle. एक इवेंट होता है ब्रेन हमारे थॉट जनरेट करता है ब्रेन अच्छा खासा पावरफुल ऑर्गन है ये आपको नेगेटिव थॉट भी जनरेट करके देगा और पॉजिटिव भी सो विद माइंडफुलनेस प्रैक्टिस एंड विद इंक्रीज फोकस एंड हैविंग अ हैंड ऑन यू नो हाउ टू फोकस वेन टू फोकस ऑन योर थॉट विच वन टू पिक दैट इज वन डिसीजन दैट यू नीड टू टेक एट द राइट टाइम इन दैट वन मोमेंट कि मैंने क्या इमोशन है क्या थॉट है जिसको फीड करना है और उसकी बेसिस पे हमारा बिहेवियर डिफाइन होता है और फिर हमारा इमोशन डिफाइन होता है छोटी सी एग्जांपल है व्हेन वी ड्राइविंग अ कार एंड समवन पासेस बाय एंड यू मिस योर सिग्नल सो दिमाग में बहुत सारी सोचें आती हैं कि व्हाई डज दिस हैपन टू मी ओ दिस पर्सन इज यू नो सो इनडिसेंट व्हाई डिड दिस पर्सन डू दिस एंड थर्ड थॉट इज मे बी दिस पर्सन इज इन हरी यू नो अल्लाह खैर करे पता नहीं इतनी जल्दी में क्यों है राधर देन सिंह की यहाँ के तो लोग ही ऐसे हैं यू नो सो देर आर सो मेनी थॉट दैट कम इन टू योर माइंड एंड इट्स ऑन अस विच वन वी पिक एंड देन वी रियक्ट अ सर्टन वे वट आई यूजली डू इज वन आई कम अक्रॉस डिफिकल्ट पीपल एंड पीपल हु हैव द एबिलिटी टू रियली डिस्टर्ब मी और you know even put me in a position where i have it's difficult to make a choice to pick a positive thought you know because it becomes difficult when you are getting angry or someone is annoying or irritating towards you you know try to think from this perspective that what is this person going through why is this person reacting in such an inappropriate way you know try to be empathetic towards their action because this probably a reason that person is unaware that person has not opened up to himself or herself that person has not explored themselves they have not done that uh, attention intention and behavior thing they have not reached that level so feel empathetic and bring in some resilience and bring in some stability inside you and the best way is to not react immediately and that again i keep you know it all for me it all comes down to being able to control your breath to be able to control your thought it all comes down to with practicing meditation you're able to focus my point is not to uh, is not to you know enforce you to do meditation but the thing is that with meditation you will learn how to pick the right thought with meditation you will learn how to control your breath so all of these questions now breath kitni choti si cheez hai it's such a neglected part of our lives we take it for granted lekin is ek breath se there's so much we can handle it is an answer to so many questions it's the mental that's, that's how it is pushra and uh, that's where we were trying to highlight those things which we are actually neglecting in our work routines at home and there is a uh, uh, one last part where we haven't uh, uh, really discussed yet this is this question that comes to me on my whatsapp that uh, since all the gyms and uh, uh, meditation uh, workshops wherever these were happening these are closed now so how they can do these things and incorporate these things at home any simple uh, exercises or breathing exercises that you can recommend them yeah so you see work uh, i work out at home now i work out at home there are online class, classes available if you feel you're not uh, you do not you're not very uh, informed enough that you pick up a weight or you start working out you don't really even have to buy new treadmills and new dumbbells and everything i do everything with whatever i have at home you know people have been using a uh, one and a half liter water bottles as their dumbbells and they've been working out at home you can pick simple exercises you can start skipping you don't even need enough space for that you can start skipping at home skip for 15 minutes you can do your push ups at home. you can do your lunges at home you can do um, 
you know what do you call that squats at home so even if you do all of these five times each it's going to take away 20 25 minutes of workout from you and that will really help you to keep you physically active as far as gyms are concerned i believe even if gyms open up i would suggest ke let's you know maintain a distance and let's just be very careful because it's not impossible you just need to make an intention and be firm about it that no i have to do this my body needs it i want to live a healthy life i need this and then you you can be able to do it as far as meditations are concerned um um there are online meditation sessions that are taking place even i conduct online meditation sessions i do it for different corporates i do it for uh, you know at a personal level as well you know usually friends group up and they come up for a group session as well so you can do meditation sessions online as well other than that you can also try to do some breathing exercises on your own uh for example there is one breathing exercise nadi shodana pranayama which means uh, alternate nostril breathing so what happens is you breathe with uh, one nose uh, at a time right so you close one nostril and you inhale from the other nostril and then you hold your breath there you close this you close the other nostril and you exhale from the second nostril and then you inhale i'm just moving my hands so i keep the movement very uh, visual and you're able to see me clearly if you go to my platform on on instagram you can see tutorials on few breathing exercises there's a short guided breathing exercise as well meditation as well you can practice that as well otherwise just sit in silence uh light some scented candles around you just to try to create an environment keep the lights dim sit in peace you can play some light music you know sounds of water you know tibetan bells you can play those from youtube or any other music platform that you have that you can use and just sit and quietly breathe try to not think about anything else thoughts will come to you they will definitely come to you just don't push them away just let them be let them float it's a very you know i need another hour to <laughs> explain how exactly you can sit and meditate so i'm just giving you the crux of it that how you can you know do it in a very uh, basic way of meditation or breathing exercises you can search no, on the internet for nadi shodana pranayama and uh, you may get guides on that as well perfect i will actually mention these exercises uh in our comment section as well after this uh, live stream gets over but uh, yeah. it was wonderful to have you bushra uh, i really would like to just summarize a bit that how we started from uh, attention intention and uh, mindfulness and bringing mindfulness and uh, uh, healthy practices and trying to notice those uh, small things in our uh, daily lifestyle that we have been neglecting be it your sleep be it the way you sit and work uh, making your proper work stations uh, giving you know having a better sleep so all these can actually help and uh, improve your physical well-being during these time but all of this needs a lot of discipline uh to be there and you know to give you some hydrated eating clean staying hydrated keeping a balance of nutrition i do not, i'm not an advocate of any particular diet that, that this is the diet you should do either protein diet or keto diet eat everything but eat in portions that are nominal eat in portions that suit your body and your age and your gender at the moment you know and it's not necessary that you eat everything today you know if i have taken a small amount of carbohydrates i'll make sure that i take fats from some olive oil or something healthy or try to uh, avoid non processed uh, you know processed foods try to eat organic food or try to eat healthy food home cooked meals you know let them deliver if they're delivering mcdonalds and all of that junk food opt for what is being cooked at home because it really keep, that also keeps you very fresh your meta, um, your metabolism is in place you know you don't feel lazy then you don't feel sleepy in odd hours and when you're eating mindfully you will never overeat you will always eat what the, the, a very nominal amount of food because 
that experience is so filling it it fills your stomach before time you know before the usual time so yeah do all of this and then there are many indoor activities you can indulge into you know it's just that you know it takes it takes just one second to stand up and you know just get there exactly so you need your intention yeah and you and can you set goals you know yeah you can you can set goals for yourself start with a weekly goal you know that this week i will make sure i don't eat junk so spend one week like that just making sure you're not eating junk keep a track i love journaling so i make my activity trackers so if there is a set of uh, activities that i want to make sure i do in a day for example spend some time with family then i want to practice yoga then i need some time for my meditation i need some time for my reading and researches then i need some time mm-hmm. for kanyuk so i have made that tracker and every day i'll spare 30 40 seconds by the end of the day and i will just highlight what did i miss out today what did i do today so what happens is ki if i if i am being very lazy and i'm missing out a lot on something i open up that tracker and it gives me a reminder that hey you need to get back on track you know you're losing out on this or if i'm doing really well it acts like a motivator you know that oh my god i'm doing really well i should keep up at it so you know choti choti cheeze hoti hain bahut choti cheeze hoti hain and they really help you uh, bring a lot of stability यू नो जब आप जितना ऑर्गेनाइज चल रहे होते हैं जब चीजें आपकी एक रूटीन भी ऑर्गेनाइज हो जाती है ना आपकी मेंटल स्ट्रेस बहुत कम हो जाती है दैट्स हाउ इट इज दैट्स हाउ इट इज एंड पुष्रा इट वाज अ ग्रेट प्लेजर टू हैव यू वी रियली लव्ड हाउ पीसफुली एंड यू नो इन अ वेरी फॉर्मेटेड ऑर्डर यू हैव गिवन अस द टिप्स रिगार्डिंग स्टेइंग माइंडफुल एंड स्टेइंग हेल्दी we'll definitely catch up with you in our other uh, sessions as well where we can you know dive in a bit more detail regarding these practices and exercises but i For hope sure. audience yeah. really like the session today and we we'll look forward to meeting you guys tomorrow uh inshallah from 7 to 8 pm we'll shift the cha- uh, time a little bit uh due to audience feedback that they really want to attend the sessions after the work hours so we'll be doing our next session tomorrow with dr arif garali uh at 7 pm so looking forward to that and take care stay healthy stay mindful thank you so much for sure thank, thank you so much anam thank you for inviting me it was a great audience no doubt i loved the questions there's just one question i really want to answer i think khalid <laughs> hussain asked that should we refuse to the ad hoc work that comes after work hours um sir this has been my rule so far in 8 years of corporate experience i do not work after my work hours because my, that that work time is gone but i make sure that even if my office starts at 8 which it does 8 am i am available to work and i will work as hard as i can to get all the tasks done but you know for my mental peace because this job i am doing i am doing it for my you know financial stability for my wellness in a sense right so i can't compromise on that so yes always set rules learn to set boundaries for yourself and you will get there to the point where i say that the mind body and soul need to be aligned great great nice thought to end bushra and uh, thank you so much audience for your time we'll see you tomorrow again bye bye